Waterless and kind of hopeless, I continued my journey through the desert. It was 110 degrees Fahrenheit, and together with the strong winds, it was really hard to move. But what else could I do? I kept moving as fast as I could while I was dreaming about water, coke, pools, hot tubs, and whatever other liquid sources I could think of. Looking at the maps, I got some hope. There were three possible water sources before fields. The first two springs didn't materialize. They were dry. <laughs> but the third one looked like this. Wow, I thought I was dreaming. But no, the water was real. And it didn't taste bad, and it didn't smell bad. I drank as much as I could and filled up all my bottles. As I continued from uh, Borax Hot Springs, I uh, suddenly came to the sign that said, well, Danger Hot Springs, that was uh, kind of obvious, but that was uh, more worrisome. Borax Lake water is unsafe for human consumption. Arsenic levels are 25 times the critical limit for drinking water. So basically I poisoned myself with the water that I just drank. So in trouble I was again. I wasn't quite sure what to expect from arsenic poisoning. It was still ways to go to fields, so I kept moving and was keeping my hope up for a burger, one of their famous milkshakes and some beer. The moving was really painful and slow and as the sun started to set I fell into some sort of rabbit hole. That's where I lost all my hope that I would ever make it for the burger, the beer and the famous milkshake. I eventually made it, but by then it was past 9 o'clock, pitch dark and the place was closed. <laughs> I crashed in their parking lot and got up the next morning as early as usual. The first thing I saw in the dark was a dead bird. I was hoping this was a good sign. I had a long and difficult day ahead of me with crossing the Pueblo Mountains, bushwhacking through the Denayo Canyon and then crossing the valley until I would reach the next cache. After worshipping the gods of the Oregon Desert Trail, I enjoyed some breakfast with views. Crossing the Pueblo Mountains is mostly off trail. The route follows beautiful but rough ridge lines, and the views are just amazing. Here I saw a herd of bighorn sheep. After many hours, I finally reached the top of the Denayo Canyon. It doesn't look too bad first, but the more you go in, the worse it gets. Denayo Canyon. Bad, 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 bad. is really soul shredding it's very slow lots of sagebrush and, uh, very steep uh, narrow canyon um, uh, that was uh, really slow going uh, by any means uh, I took a very high route and uh, I think that was a good choice
that section is kind of boring because it follows a road uh, for a bit, but it's a long road. It goes on forever, and you can see the other mountain range that you're getting to, and uh, it's just never, it just never ends. So for these next 12 miles or so, I, I, I made these little contracts with my, myself. Uh, it was like fixing a, a bush in uh, maybe half a mile or so. And I, I, I told myself that I was going to run to this bush and then uh, recover for a little bit. And then <clears throat> I would fixate another bush and then run to that. And so that's that's really how I got through these uh, 12 miles. And, and it was a way to just keep me going and have have a target, sort of a near-term target that would really help me to get to that point and then I would set another target. So it's a neat little trick that really works well if you're really tired and you have to still go many, many miles. Just past sunset, I finally reached my next food cache. I finished the day with the usual chores, taking care of my feet and preparing for the next day. I also ended up salvaging my Achilles strap. I cut it into little pieces that I was going to use as blister pads. Then I slept like a volcanic rock. Wait for the next episode to get answers to things you don't even want to know.